Hi there. We are going to talk about project portfolio management objectives and uh, the managerial practices and methods that are connected to these objectives. The three project portfolio management objectives are the following. Maximizing the value of the portfolio. So I want to underline the maximization of the value of the portfolio and not necessarily uh, maximizing the value of each single project selected to the portfolio. Then link to strategy, which means that uh, we are uh, selecting and prioritizing projects that are aligned to strategy. But uh, there is also a, as an aspect that the project uh, can uh, initiate an emergent strategy so uh, the project can renew the uh, firm strategy so it is not necessarily uh, aligned to the previous strategy but uh, the future project strategy uh, will be aligned to the project thanks to the project and uh, its uh, power of renewal. Uh, then uh, balance in the portfolio, uh, which means that uh, we cannot, for example, have high uh, reward, high risk projects. We also must have some uh, projects with uh, uh, less risk and uh, for more fire sure uh, profits, even though not uh, that high. Uh, we all also must, uh, for example, in new product development, develop uh, products for all of our uh, product families, maybe even uh, some uh, new product families to come uh, and so on. Then if we have uh, uh, development projects to certain markets, we can develop products for Russian market, for, for the US market and uh, so on. So uh, there must be a um, balance in the portfolio. In other words, we cannot uh, have all eggs in the same basket, but uh, we are really uh, seeking for uh, balance there. Okay, uh, let's look uh, in more detail about what kind of a methods or practices uh, these uh, objectives might be connected to. So uh, when we are talking about maximizing the value of the portfolio, uh, typically companies use net present value and some other investment calculations to understand whether uh, the project itself is uh, profitable. Uh, then mm, cost benefit analysis and uh, also uh, there might be some uh, uh, other forms of value like brand value or some other uh, issues that uh, are not necessarily uh, connected to uh, the uh, economic uh, profitability cal calculations and uh, they can be evaluated by using for example scoring models by uh, giving projects scores uh, based on certain criteria that are considered as important or considered as uh, uh, value enhancing issues. Then uh, link to strategy, the second objective. Uh, uh, we can evaluate the strategic uh, fit of a project, whether the project fits to the strategy of the firm. But uh, also we can uh, uh, look at the whole portfolio and uh, evaluate whether there is strategic priority in a project. So that means that whether the whole uh, portfolio supports uh, the strategy of the firm as a whole and uh, therefore we might come to a conclusion that certain project with uh, extremely good strategic fit doesn't uh, justify its existence in the uh, 
company's portfolio because of uh, the whole portfolio uh, being more uh, uh, connected to the strategy without uh, the certain, certain uh, project. Then uh, we can have also the top-down approach of linking the projects to strategy by, for example, establishing strategic buckets, which means that uh, we might want to make a decision that we put 10% of our yearly budget to research, 40% uh, to product development, and uh, the rest 50% to developing customer relationship, for example. And if these are the strategic buckets, strategic objectives in a way, then we must find projects to fill in those buckets so that uh, our proportional spending on these areas are uh, what we have decided from looking at, at the top. Then we can also have a bottom-up approach where we, for example, uh, give scores to projects and evaluate their goodness in a way or even very early ideas and initiatives and uh, in that way we can find out how our existing projects, ideas, initiatives uh, uh, come to fill in certain uh, portfolio and whether we can build a balanced portfolio based on that. Then uh, the balance in the portfolio. So there we can use bubble diagrams. I very soon I show you what the bubble diagram is, uh, strategy tables, and uh, uh, these are more or less visual means uh, to help the decision making and uh, to see uh, what kind of a different projects we uh, have and uh, how much uh, spending we are going to put on uh, each of them. So how uh, the portfolio uh, is formed from different kinds of uh, uh, projects that are uh, in balance in, uh, in, in certain uh, or against certain criteria. Okay, um, now we have been talking about the scoring models and uh, selection and prioritization criteria even. Now, uh, this picture shows typical criteria that are used in scoring models when managing, for example, development project portfolios. And... Uh, the words selection or selection criteria and prioritization or prioritization criteria are used interchangeably. So that really means that uh, we are selecting projects and prioritizing them according to these uh, same criteria, typical criteria. So uh, reward to the company, business strategy fit, then uh, evaluating whether the project leverages the core competencies. So that means if the project has the ability uh, to take use of the company's resources and skills and in that way build on a solid ground. Uh, probability of market success or commercial success. Market is one important thing. There are customers that are other are uh, either are willing or not willing to buy, and probability of technical success. For example, can we even make that kind of a project technically? So, opportunity or reward, that is often compared to risk, reward versus risk, and then risk itself. How big risk do we have in that project? Well, this picture, uh, this animated picture, uh, shows you what a bubble diagram is, and also uh, it gives you an understanding on uh, what do we mean when we are linking projects to strategy 
and also balancing uh, the portfolio. So first, here is a bubble diagram. And uh, there are four projects, A, B, C and D. And uh, uh, they are placed uh, in this uh, two axis uh, uh, diagram uh, based on how much reward they are expected to bring to the company and how big risk there is uh, included in that project. So we can pick any two dimensions for these kinds of uh, diagrams. Now we have just picked two out of, for example, those scoring models. And we can also think that uh, we have uh, scored, uh, provided scores for uh, these projects uh, from, for example, from uh, the scale of one to five. The reward, five means b the biggest reward and then one, uh, the smallest reward expectation and also risk from one to five, for example. And uh, this helps us to place these projects in this kind of a di diagram. Uh, however, this diagram is multidimensional in a way uh, because the size of the bubble uh, typically describes the investment in that project. Either monetary investment, the budget, or uh, man hours that uh, we are going to use for that project. Also, uh, the color can indicate a project type or projects in certain uh, product areas uh, or some other uh, dimension. So we can visually describe uh, many uh, characteristics of projects and uh, portfolio by using these kinds of uh, uh, diagrams. Now, uh, to the right, we have uh, a table where we have these same projects, project A, B, C and D. And uh, in the columns, we have the strategic objectives of the firm. Objective one, two, three and four. Objective one, uh, can, for example, be that uh, we are uh, developing certain uh, new product to Russian market, for example. Objective two can be that we are renewing our company organization and there is an organizational change that is going to happen. Uh, and uh, objective uh, three uh, might be, for example, that uh, we are uh, investing in customer relationships and developing customer relationships and customer relationship management significantly. And uh, objective four might uh, be that uh, we are strongly supporting our existing products uh, to make uh, facelifts for the current customers and uh, to have them to buy. Uh, this, this next generation uh, products uh, in that product family, for example. Okay. Now we have kind of a ticked, uh, uh, these our projects A, B, C and D, how they support these objectives. So project A supports objective one and two or is linked or aligned to the company strategy, strategic objectives one and two. Project B uh, to objectives one and three. And uh, for example, project D uh, is not aligned to any of these four objectives. Okay. Now, maybe we need a new objective because we have this wonderful project D and there is a big promise in that project that it even renews the company strategy and develops uh, our business to some very important new areas. So uh, we might establish a new strategic objective. 
and in this way the project D is linked to uh, the company strategy, the new objective of the company. Maybe uh, we don't need strategic objective for at all. Maybe we recognize that okay we have uh, put that as our strategic goal but uh, actually we that is not that important and uh, by the way we don't have any project to support that maybe that is not even uh, needed and uh, it can be deleted this strategic objective as obsolete then because we have uh, limited resources maybe we kill project number uh, project C because we already have projects A and B supporting the strategic objective one. So would we need uh, a third, pr third project to support the same strategic objective? Maybe not. Maybe we should chill, kill uh, project C. And maybe we should uh, establish a new project E that would support and strengthen uh, uh, the achievement of strategic objective number two. So this animated picture, this uh, dynamism here shows you uh, the ideas of uh, how the visualization through bubble diagrams and also through these kinds of strategy tables can be used to understand uh, uh, the management of portfolios and inherent decision making. And I would say that the interaction, communication and information distribution is, is rather important. And uh, uh, the decision making doesn't only take place based on quantitative uh, calculated scores or uh, calculated net present values or so. Uh, it should really just to ignite uh, the interaction and communication and discussion and understanding more deeply about what the projects are about and what the portfolio management is about. And one important thing also to understand is that uh, uh, if we can calculate for example the net present value for a project. So the paradox is that uh, maybe we can calculate net present values accurately only to projects that are not that new, that are more or less uh, um, uh, small incremental developments. But if we have really something big, something new, our company's whole future uh, uh, and the connected IT idea in some project. So maybe that is so wild, that is so new that we even cannot uh, calculate uh, the economic profitability of that project, even though there is a big promise and there are big expectations in terms of uh, future profit. So. Uh, we must also understand that, that the more specific and accurate data we have on some project, it also can be an indication that uh, uh, that, this, that project is clear and not so new and uh, rather well understood already, which is not always a benefit uh, to uh, take on a project for future renewal. Well, here are some pictures about uh, bubble diagrams and uh, 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 histograms where we can, which we can use in portfolio decision making. Not very much new in that uh, there is risk and return, technological maturity and uh, technological competitive position and so on uh, in these dimensions. So we can select these dimensions as we like. And in this next picture, uh, the typical Boston matrix, where we have uh, uh, the profitability uh, calculated by net present value uh, in the other axis, 
and the probability of technical success in the other axis. And then we have different uh, products or different businesses that we can invest in uh, with different profiles. And uh, this also tells more or less about the idea of balancing the portfolio that we might need all kinds of projects, all from these kinds, but we must uh, carefully balance how much we would invest in each each area. Uh, then also the timing aspect is important uh, in managing uh, project portfolios. And here is a kind of a schema uh, where uh, projects uh, are positioned uh, in time uh, by uh, uh, marking uh, the number of months or uh, the scale of uh, months that it takes from uh, the project uh, to complete. So uh, it's important to also balance portfolio in terms of uh, timing so that we continuously get outcomes from the projects and we gradually renew our uh, company uh, through these projects. So it is not necessarily uh, beneficial to start uh, several big projects at the same time that each take some three or four years because it might uh, be that we need some renewal also during the next few years and we should uh, make some smaller projects or uh, smaller improvements in our business uh, during that time until we get those big uh, uh, um, big, big uh, new products for example uh, from those long-term projects in use. And if we don't have resources enough, so we must then uh, maybe put some uh, really big uh, changes, uh, big projects on hold and only have few of them and also then have shorter projects to bring uh, the benefit faster. Um, so there is a kind of a time axis of three months, six months, 12 months and 24 months based on uh, how long it takes for each of these projects uh, to be completed today. And uh, then there are also uh, initiatives or ideas uh, in this left part of the big picture in the funnel. Uh, and uh, it typically takes longer for them to uh, get uh, in the kind of a, into a form of a product that can be, for example, used in the market. And of course, when we were talking about timing, uh, a typical uh, gun chart on projects uh, can always be a good chart uh, to draw to understand what are our ongoing projects, how long they take and uh, uh, how many projects we are uh, juggling with in our project portfolio management. So I end up uh, this uh, lecture to this uh, familiar chart form and uh, I hope that uh, this lecture about uh, the three project portfolio management objectives and uh, the inherent management approaches and methodologies clarified uh, your understanding about uh, what project portfolio management is what it can be in practice. Thank you very much. And uh, there are further lectures about project portfolio management. Uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, in those video lectures. Bye now.